lightjunction.com. Illuminate your world. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Hey, everybody, this is Brian from Light Junction, and I've got a video today to address a switch problem on JetBeam's TCR 20 and 21. This, uh, the TCR 20 and 21 was a limited release titanium light from JetBeam, and we've heard some complaints about the operation of the light depending on what battery you have in it. And we relayed that information onto JetBeam, and they listened and have redesigned a switch. So if you purchase this light from us, we'll get in contact with you, and we'll be sending you a switch kit, and I'll go through what's in that kit. But from now moving forward, if you buy a TCR20 or 21, it will have the upgraded switch in it, so you won't have to worry about any of those issues. So we'll jump right in and talk about what you're going to get in the kit that we're going to get. Um, the tool that you need will be included. We're going to include a wipe cloth for wiping the excessive grease down and then getting the smudges off of it after you do the install. And then the kit itself. So this is exactly what you're going to get from us if we send you one of these repair kits. Several layers of wrapping here. In one bag are three screws, a contact pin, and a spring. Now, as I go through this today, I'm using kind of a, a, a work mat surface. Um, so that these screws don't get lost and out of the way, and I recommend kind of keeping these things all together here. Then the, the other thing you're going to get is the actual switch itself. Uh, take caution, or when you remove the switch out of the bag, the new pins here, they're spring-loaded, but they, they are not trapped within this switch, so they will fall out if you play with them too much. Uh, it's pre-greased around the O-ring um, and around the spring insert area so that everything kind of goes together nicely. So we'll set this right there, and then we'll get right into the replacement of the switch. Using your tool, we're going to start by removing these three retainer screws off the back ring of the light. There's not a whole lot of uh, torque put on these screws so they should come off pretty easily here. Once we get the screws off, you lift your retainer ring off and set it to the side. You will reuse this retainer ring. So what I recommend is taking your old screws, set them to the side so they don't get confused with anything. Then we've got the switch itself it is in the light. It is there's friction in the O-ring holding this switch now or in now at this point. What you want to do is slowly look around the edge of the light and you'll see where a pin would go into the switch. You'll see that on the old switch if you look very carefully. So there it is there. That pin is under spring load. So you don't just want to pull it out or the old pin will go flying. So I recommend just very gently prying up, pulling the switch out. And if you keep your finger over where that pin is, you hear that little pop, the spring won't go flying. Your finger will actually stop that from happening. So once the spring has released that pin out, then just kind of carefully work the switch out. And we can set our old switch to the side. We won't need that pin or spring since the new one is designed properly. Here's what the underneath of the light looks like. You're going to see grease all around the edges on the inside here. Um, don't tamper with that. Leave that alone. That, that's perfectly fine for it to stay in there. Try not to let anything um, dirt, uh, keep dust down to a minimum to get into the light right now so you don't run into any future problems. So now let's move on to installing the spring into the new switch. You can take your tool. It's slightly magnetic. And here's the spring. We're going to put it right into the hole here. There's a little bit of grease inside of that hole, so that spring, once you get it off, the tool comes off and it should stay in there just nicely. We're going to take our pin 
and insert the smallest point of the pin first into the spring. It doesn't click in, it just kind of sits there, just like that. Now, on the light itself, there are two areas on the light that kind of are beveled in where the actual pin rides. So you want to make note of that. I would recommend, when you pull your switch out, leaving the light in the same orientation so that you put the pin back in the same slot. Since this pin can fall out, and these four contact pins underneath here are not permanently affixed, I'd recommend holding your switch in a vertical fashion, bringing the light up to the switch, and there's our cutout. And if you can see, get zoomed in, you see the little cutout area there that our pin's gonna ride in. So bring the light up to the switch, and very carefully, there's a little bit of tension with the O-ring, press just a little bit to get it started in there. Now from there, take your tool that we've supplied you, push in on that pin, and now the switch is seated down in its place with the pin inside of the groove notch on the light itself. It is okay for the switch not to be sitting exactly level. The retainer ring will level this out once we put it all back together. Since the switch came pre-greased, we've included a rag for you. The easiest time to get to clean out um, any grease that may have gotten in this area here that will be obstructed when you put your ring on is right now. So we're gonna take our rag and clean any grease that our fingers have gotten on the switch out of there. This won't affect the operation of the light. This is just in case you want to have your switch looking nice and clean. All right, that looks pretty good there. The next step is going to be putting our ring back on. You'll notice a lot of holes on the ring surface around here, but there are three of them that are threaded. So we will take our ring and match it up as best we can to get our holes to line up. And we're going to take the new screws supplied with the switch and drop them down in the ring. Like so. We'll take our tool and just get the thread started on each screw. This is a pretty fine, precision, um, drilled piece of equipment here. So you don't want to cross-thread any of these screws. So we start all three of them, and I don't want to put any tension on the ring yet. I just want to get the screws seated in it so they don't fall out. As you're doing these, turn very slowly. Like start with just an eighth and then increase to a quarter of a turn. If you feel any resistance, back up. Go the opposite way until you feel this screw go in with almost zero resistance. We do not want to cross thread these in. So once we get them started, you can put a little bit of pressure on the ring here with two fingers. And then in an even pattern, no more than I would say a turn and a half to two full turns, go around in order. Once again, the only, uh, the only pressure being put on this ring is by my fingers here, not by any of these screws so far yet. We're just going around one by one to make sure you have a nice even seat. This will ensure that your switch has a nice smooth operation. Got a little tiny little bit of tension there. This tool has got a pivot head on it that's on a swivel, so you can put your finger there and just use your uh, thumb and your middle finger to torque our tool. All right, so as we start to get tension on the ring, then we lessen the amount of turns. Go with like eighth of a turn on each screw, keeping in the same order. And if you go back to when you remove the screws, you could probably feel that they weren't on there 
with a tremendous amount of torque at all. So it doesn't take a tremendous amount of torque when putting the new switch in either. You see me going over this multiple times, but I am not tightening down very hard at all. I am just going being extra cautious to make sure that even amounts of pressure are applied to each screw. Okay, our switch is installed. We want to check for kind of a smooth operation. One thing I will say about the new switches, they do seem to operate a little more smoothly than the old ones do. When you first turn it a couple of times, you might notice that it's a little stiff as you twist one way or the other. That's okay. Um, it loosens up pretty quickly. That's the initial uh, kind of stickiness of the grease that's in there combined with the O-ring and smashing everything down together. Plus, once you turn it, if that ring is off-centered or tilted even a little bit, it'll start to equalize out. After you turn that switch a few more times, just go back and check it without putting any pressure with your fingers. And we're not really tightening. We're just checking to make sure that not any of the screws are loose. Once you feel like the switch is adequately tightened, then this process is done. When you do this, if you feel like your switch is excessively hard to turn, I'd recommend loosening up all three screws one at a time, like kind of in the same order that we tightened them in, loosening up all three screws until they're loose, jiggling the retainer ring a little bit, just making sure that it's evenly centered, and then start the process over again, going and tightening each one at even increments. So now that we've replaced this, this switch, you'll notice the new switch, I didn't talk about this yet, the new switch is a gold color. This gold color is pretty nice looking. It goes right in line with the accents on the flashlight, whether you get the TCR20 or the 21. So now that our new switch is installed, let's test this guy out. One of the operational problems with this light was this light was designed to be able to take a, a, a multitude of different batteries. It didn't react well to double A's or uh, either 1.2 or 1.5 volt and didn't have any of the modes of operation that would get hung up. So we're going to test this newly, newly this new light today. I've tested several models, but not this one, um, with a Duracell AA battery. And we'll tighten it down. Doesn't have to go really tight, just tight enough to work. Let's test our switch operation. Switch feels good. We don't get any flickering. All the way counterclockwise turns the switch on, clockwise turns it off. So let's go through the operation mode and make sure everything's working right. Now from the selector ring we've got it on standby. We'll turn it on, and if you can see that there it's very low, we'll turn it on and get to the lowest mode. Rotate right, all the way up to high. When you're at high, you'll feel a little indention and the ring will stop. Let's rotate back off. You see a little bit of flicker there. That's when it's coming off of its turbo high mode and going back into the variable adjustment mode. Off. One click over is SOS. One more click over goes into strobe. So all these features were taken away if you used a AA 1.2 or 1.5 volt battery when this light first went out. We now have full functionality with the light now with a new switch installed and a primary AA battery. You can use the nice rag that we've included in here to kind of clean any smudges or any excess grease that have gotten anywhere in the light make it all shiny and new again. And there you have it. So this is the switch replacement for the JetBeam TCR20 or 21. If you have any questions about this, please give me a shout. Um, you can email me, call me, chat with me online. I'll be happy to walk you through any problems that you're having with this. If you need one of these switches and we haven't sent one to you, let us know that too and we'll get one out right away. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.